Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, syukurullah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulullah, sayyidina maulana Muhammad ibn Abdullah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala, mabad. Honorable Rector of Gajah Mata University and Madam Deputy Rector who is here with us. Honorable Ambassador Glendon, welcome to Yogyakarta. Distinguished speakers and participants, first let me express our gratitude to Gajah Mata University that allows us to have this event in this uh, very honorable place, if not a sacred place for this university because <laughs> this is the Senate building and of course, thanks you also for publishing the uh, books that we create from the event that we had November last year in Bali in Yogyakarta, which is the R20 event. I, this is a very uh, a moment that has a very deep meaning for me because there is no better place than back home, especially from for a runaway child like me. Is, uh, is so great to meet old friends, my teachers and masters in this uh, occasion, my beloved master K. Haji Mokhtar Mas'ud. Alhamdulillah Pak Mukhtar di tengah maraknya keributan nasab Pak Alwi nasib saya semakin membaik alhamdulillah This joke will not be as good as it is if I say it in English so I say it in Indonesia Ladies and gentlemen, in the wake of upcoming general, ele general election these days that we will have on February next year, people are talking about the threat of identity politics. People are seeing that identity politics can post a severe danger to our society as what we had, what we experienced in the last general elections. At least the last two general elections, we had a very, very bad experiences related to identity politics when people use religion as a weapon to gain political sports and to attack others. This issue actually has a very broad ramification and at the same time very deep root in the discourse of religious teachings itself. I, 
and our colleagues, the uh, believers of Islam, would ask a question. If identity politics is not good or even forbidden, then is it really not good to bring religion into public and social spaces? Because bringing religion as identity into politics actually comes from the uh, um, the motivation or even instinct of religious believers to bring religion, their religion, into uh, public and social space. People are talking also at the same time that religion should be left for only private space, for individual private, private space. The logic of this kind of articulation is um, that religion, when it is brought into social and public space, then that will risk a competition between different religions, fight between religions against each other over domination of the public and social spaces. The danger of this is kind of obvious to us. Of course, it is dangerous to allow religion to fight each other over domination on uh, public and uh, social spaces. Because now, nowadays, we are living in different groups, you know, groups of different religions are living next to each other in the same neighborhood. So if we allow such fighting to happen, then it will raise a great danger to uh, uh, the, uh, the safety, the stability of the whole society. But then again, it is a deep question for us believers of religion. Do we have to bring religion, are we allowed to bring religion into public and social life or not? If we think about it again, ladies and gentlemen, religions gave birth to civilization great and noble civilization. If we look into the history of human civilization for thousands of years, we will see how religion um, played a key role in the raising of every and each of great civilization in the world. You can look at the Egyptian civilization, the uh, ancient Rome, and the Christian Rome. You can look at Islam and the Arab. In every uh, moment of the raising of civilization, religion uh, played a vital role, or even the most fundamental role. So for us, and this is 
this is so obvious for believers like me and my colleagues because we believe that religion is meant to build civilization. Religion is given by God to us to help us develop civilization. And developing civilization means developing social spaces, developing the whole social construct structure. So if religion is meant to develop civilization, why cannot it be brought into social space? What is the function of religion now if it is not allowed to take part in the development of the whole social life uh, of human society? So this is a very fundamental question for, from our direction. But at the same time, we are aware, of course, certainly, about the danger of the dynamics that will uh, happen when people bring religion into broader uh, social and political life. It's like uh, identity politics is uh, uh, almost within the uh, the original, the initial instinct of religion itself. So now what do we do? How can we preserve the function of religion in our civilization while at the same time prevent the dangerous risk that can potentially uh, uh, come along with the expression of religion itself. So, upon this uh, deep concern, this deep and uh, and uh, 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 true a genuine concern of believers that this R20 initiative was started. We are seeking a way of how we can continue uphold our religion and even make it as a contribution to the upcoming civilization that the whole global society are uh, um, striving toward. But at the same time, we have to prevent our religion to become a problem. That's why the creed of this R20 initiative is to stop religion as source of the problem and start to make it a source of solution. This is just a start. There is still a long, long way to go. We know the direction where we need to go. Also, we still don't know yet what would be the end of the, what, what, what is there at the end of the road. It's still uh, it's still a struggle going on, a fierce fight maybe, but the intention is to um, call for all people of religion to call for all people of goodwill 
to join this effort together for a shared vision that we need a new human civilization which uh, is uh, built upon an international order that is truly harmonious and just, truly just and harmonious, founded upon respect for the equal right and dignity for every human being. Because this vision is the only reasonable vision if we want all humanity to survive. So again, thank you for your participation in this and I hope that uh, you all will join us together in this long journey and uh, maybe difficult struggle for, uh, for our future together. Yeah. Like uh, uh, like John Lennon said, maybe, I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. <laughs> I hope someday you'll join us. <laughs> So thank you. Wallahul Muwaffiq. Laqubit Tariq. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.